In order to guarantee your understanding of this course, it is recommended that you first complete previous universal molding courses, MU1, Introduction, MU2, Fundamentals, and MU3, Molding with Graphs. In this course, we will discuss types of plastics, mechanical properties, common materials, process characteristics, shrinkage, some experiments, types of plastics. There exist two basic types of plastics, thermosets and thermoplastics. Thermoset materials. Thermoset polymers are those materials that can be molded only one time. Although injection molding of thermosets is not the same as molding with thermoplastics, they are similar. Because of this, universal molding for thermosets, such as liquid silicone, bulk molding compounds, or BMC, epoxy, rubber, melamine, etc., is a separate course from this one. In this course, we will concentrate on thermoplastics. Thermoplastic materials. A thermoplastic polymer is one that can be remelted, which means that it can be reground and molded more than once. Its molecular organization falls into two types, amorphous and semicrystalline. Amorphous. These are thermoplastics that offer no type of molecular organization. In other words, the molecules are totally randomized. Semicrystalline. These are the combination of organized crystal chain segments surrounded by disorganized amorphous segments. Think of the amorphous molecular structure as a clump of spaghetti. Now think of semicrystalline structures as containing groups of organized noodles with some type of orientation. These are known as crystals. These crystals are surrounded by disorganized amorphous molecular chains. This explains why this partially organized structure, or mix of amorphous and crystals, is known as semicrystalline. Mechanical Properties Molecular orientation causes mechanical properties that can affect injection molding. The mechanical characteristics of these materials can be illustrated with a graph of stiffness versus temperature. The vertical coordinate represents stiffness, in which the origin represents a softened or melted material, and an increase represents a rise in stiffness. The horizontal coordinate represents the material's temperature, in which the origin represents a material at room temperature, and an increase represents a rise in temperature. Amorphous materials. The graph profile of an amorphous polymer shows that, at certain low temperatures, this type of material stays in a solid state. Increasing the temperature causes the material to reach a glass transition temperature, Tg. After reaching the glass transition temperature, Tg, the material enters into a transition zone known as the glass transition zone, where it gradually loses its stiffness. If the temperature continues to increase, the material will become totally softened. Think of it as an elastic or putty-like melt that is not liquid. It is in this softened state that amorphous polymers are molded. Semicrystallines. The graph of a semicrystalline material offers a distinct picture. The graph profile of a semicrystalline polymer shows that, at certain low temperatures, this type of material stays in a solid state. Just like amorphous polymers, this material stays stiff at lower temperatures and reaches a glass transition zone at temperature Tg when the temperature is increased. When discussing semicrystalline materials, it is not common to use the term Tg. In semicrystalline materials, the glass transition zone is insignificant and actually corresponds to the amorphous part of the material. If the temperature increases beyond the glass transition zone, the material will lose some stiffness. Even so, it still remains in a solid state. If the temperature continues to increase, it will reach the melt temperature, Tm. At temperatures greater than Tm, semicrystalline materials will melt. After Tm, the material becomes liquid. For this reason, we say that semicrystalline polymers melt and don't soften like amorphous polymers. It is after Tm where semicrystalline materials are molded. Note that semicrystalline materials do not have the advantage of as large an injection zone as amorphous materials. This makes them more difficult to melt. Once you identify the type of material, 
Adjust the injection molding process, taking into consideration that amorphous materials soften and semicrystallines melt. Common materials. Amorphous. ABS, polystyrene, acrylic, PVC, polycarbonate. Semicrystallines. PA or nylon, acetate, polyethylene, polyester, polypropylene. Amorphous materials soften. Amorphous melt injects as a pasty or gummy fluid. A purge of this melt can be compared to purging a paste that has little intention of flowing. Semicrystallines melt. Semicrystalline melt injects as a liquid fluid. A purge of this melt flows easily, like a liquid. Amorphous material doesn't resist chemical attacks. When amorphous material is exposed to chemicals, such as solvents, it decomposes. Semicrystallines resist chemical attacks. Semicrystallines are more resistant against solvents. For example, a container made of HDPE, or high-density polyethylene, can store gasoline. Note, even though polycarbonate is used to make bulletproof glass, a polycarbonate container will decompose if filled with gasoline. Amorphous materials are transparent. Amorphous melt or solids that contain no additives are translucent or clear. Semicrystalline materials are opaque. In their solid state, semicrystalline materials have organized segments or crystals that reflect light. Because of this, they are opaque. Note, be careful not to confuse the property of material clarity with the term crystalline morphology. Amorphous materials have little shrinkage. Amorphous materials shrink less since their disorganized molecules occupy more space. Semicrystallines have a high rate of shrinkage. The crystals in semicrystallines are organized molecules that tend to take up less space. Because of this, they shrink more during cooling and the formation of crystals. Note, it is said that mass dimensions are more significant with amorphous materials. It is also said that thermal dimensions are more significant with semicrystallines. In summary, amorphous materials soften. Semicrystallines melt. Amorphous material doesn't resist chemical attacks. Semicrystallines resist chemical attacks. Amorphous materials are transparent. Semicrystalline materials are opaque. Amorphous materials have little shrinkage. Semicrystallines have a high rate of shrinkage. Why are semicrystallines opaque only in their solid state? Because in a melted state, the crystals become disorganized like amorphous material, and light can pass through them. If you someday have the opportunity to observe a semicrystalline melt with no additives being purged, for example, polyethylene, you'll be able to see how it changes from translucent to opaque as it cools and solidifies. So not all melted material has a crystalline morphology? There are always exceptions. Though they aren't common, there are materials that form crystals in their liquid state. These are called liquid crystal polymers. When a semicrystalline part is demolded, has it formed the maximum amount of crystals? Not necessarily. As a molder, you can control the amount of crystals formed during the cooling stage. Why would I want to control the amount of crystals in molded semicrystalline parts? This can be answered with various examples. When the objective is to maximize clarity when manufacturing PET preforms, that will later be stretched to form bottles. You should reduce crystal formation as much as possible. If you someday have the chance to see PET resin, you'll see that it is completely white and opaque since it has already crystallized to its maximum. Remember that crystals block the passage of light. This is why a super cold mold is used during cooling to create a thermal shock in order to stop the formation of crystals. Assembling thermoplastic parts ultrasonically can be dampered by a crystalline structure. This is another reason why some molders control the formation of crystals. Some products molded with semicrystalline resin, such as tie wraps, require control of mechanical properties such as flexibility and toughness. A crystalline structure makes a material more rigid and inflexible. So in this case, some molders control the formation of crystals. In summary, Know your material before trying to mold a product and identify the mechanical properties that most affect your product. Here's an example. Remember that if 
pack pressure P and cooling time T combine, they affect the dimensions of a molded product so that the dimensions are a function of T, P, and T times P, where T represents the effect of temperature on the thermal dimensions, P the effect of the pressure on the mass dimensions, and T times P the combined effect of T and P on the dimensions. The contribution to the dimension of each of these effects will depend upon the type of material. What is the combined effect of T times P? It's when temperature and pressure combine and create a third effect in the dimension. Even though the combined contribution is difficult to visualize, it can exist. For example, pack time could be affected by the temperature of the mold. Note that it is possible that one or two of the effects are insignificant in some applications. This is why you should understand your material before you try to make dimensional corrections. Let's review. Process characteristics. Amorphous materials have problems of overpacking due to low shrinkage. Semicrystallines have problems of incomplete packing due to high shrinkage. Amorphous have problems of flash because of overpacking. Semicrystallines have sinking because of incomplete packing. Amorphous materials have part breakage during demolding, since little shrinkage causes parts to hold to the cavity. Semicrystallines are easy to demold since high shrinkage helps separate parts from the cavity. Shrinkage. Amorphous materials, for practical effects, shrink proportionally in all directions. Semicrystalline materials shrink more in the direction of injection flow rather than in the direction perpendicular to the injection flow. During injection, the polymeric chains line up in the direction of the flow, and crystals included are forced to maintain some orientation as they solidify. During shrinkage, these molecules conform to a more comfortable position, which is why the shrinkage is greater in the direction of the flow. When a semicrystalline is reinforced with fiberglass, its shrinkage becomes inverse, less in the direction of injection flow, and more in the perpendicular flow direction. This is because the fibers position themselves in the direction of the flow and, during shrinkage, they act like iron bars inside concrete, resisting shrinkage in the direction of their orientation. Let's look at some experiments performed by universal molding students. Experiment 1. With the same mold, injection machine, and auxiliary equipment, the effect of time on gate freeze was tested using two materials, an amorphous, polystyrene, and a semicrystalline, nylon. The following graph, part weight versus pack time, shows that the amorphous material solidified in the gates at around 6 seconds when, consequently, the weight stopped increasing. With the semicrystalline material, the students stopped the experiment after 1 second of packing and the gate was found to be solid, showing that the gate freeze occurs in less time with the semicrystalline material. This was expected, since semicrystallines change quickly from solid to liquid and back again, contrary to the amorphous material that remains in a pasty state during an extended temperature range. Experiment 2. With the same mold, injection machine, and auxiliary equipment, the effect of pack pressure on the weight of the parts was tested using two materials, an amorphous, polystyrene, and a semicrystalline, nylon. The semicrystalline showed that the weight of the part stopped significantly increasing at a pack pressure of around 40 psi. The amorphous material showed that the weight of the part stopped significantly increasing after a pack pressure of around 150 psi. This difference in the pack pressures can be attributed to the fact that amorphous melt is pasty and not liquid like a semicrystalline or to the rapid gate freeze that occurs when using a semicrystalline material. Experiment 3. With the same mold, injection machine, and auxiliary equipment, the effect of fill pressure on fill time on a mold filled to 80% was tested using two materials, an amorphous, polystyrene, and a semicrystalline, nylon. 
Semicrystalline material, being more liquid, required less pressure. For example, at a limited pressure of 232 psi, the fill time for the semicrystalline was 0.31 seconds, compared to 1.79 with the amorphous. Let's review. 